All right, so this is Kevin McCain with Kevin McCain Studios and Idaho Art Classes. And uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, site measure methods and all that good stuff. So uh, site measure methods, or what we're going to be using is called proportional measuring. And it's to help us to understand the basic height and width relationships that we're going to use for drawing. So I've got my little, I've got this little still life over here. And this little still life, we have some different objects here or what. So we focused in on this so we can see these a little better, but I've got my little still life here with some different objects. And all these objects have a very different proportion one to the other. Now proportion isn't how tall or how short they are. That's the relationship of objects to one another. We're talking proportional measuring is just the individual object. So uh, no matter how big I make this apple, if I increase its size or if I shrink it down, it's you know a little tiny thing, its proportion should be the same. Just like this cube, a cube should be a cube no matter whether it's a little cube of sugar or this little wooden cube or if it's a big huge cube that's like six feet tall by six foot deep by six feet wide, it should be a cube. It should be as tall as it is wide as it is deep. So it's something that's independent of size. Proportion is what is its basic height to width to height to width to depth ratio. So um, a lot of times we'll, we'll, we won't worry quite so much about the depth. We'll just do the height and width because that, and then we, we throw the dimension on the perspective and the volume uh, in other ways. But we want the height and width because if the volume's right, but the height and width is wrong, well, there, well then we have a problem. So let's say we were measuring this. I'm just using a, a little skewer. You could use a pencil. You could use anything. I could use my hands. I could use calipers. I could use whatever. But we're not measuring how many inches is this. We're measuring its proportion. So if I take this apple at its widest part, which is about right here, you know, and I measure that, and then I put this on the bottom and measure up, I'll find that this apple is about as tall as it is wide. So it has a one-to-one -one proportion. It is as tall as it is wide, okay? And most of your apples are like that. This one looks a little more squat. And so if I measure the, the height of this with my, my, with my, again, my little measuring stick here, if I measure the height of this guy and then I measure this apple at the widest part, yeah, he's just a little wider than he is tall. He's just under a one-to-one. -one. It's so small that I can't give you, it's not like a, it's not like one to you know, 0.75. This is almost just a little bit shorter than a one to one. Um, if we have something like this bottle, and again, this is a this is a wine uh, ice wine bottle, and I went ahead and I and I measured the I, I measured I measured the widest part, which would be the bottom. Okay, so that's that's how wide it is, is from my finger to the tip. And then if I brought this up and I look for landmarks, the first one goes to just below this writing that says how much alcohol is in it. Then I put my finger there and we go to the second mark, which is just below the A, okay? And then I would go ahead and I would put my finger just below the A and then the third mark begins right around where I see this sort of this highlight right here. So then I go to the fourth one, which is just about where the neck starts, put this in the neck, that goes about you know, halfway up here. So, you know, I lost count of that. So one, two, three, four, five, just under six. So that means the width, the width goes into the height on this thing. I guess I should have done like this so you could see it a little bit better. But the width goes into the height of this thing about six times. I'm going to put this here. Let me go one, two, you know, all the way up. And so we could go ahead and again, get the, you know, we check the width like so, you know, where's the width and that's the width line that we come, oh, let's see, and there's, you know, again, we go over this, say that's one and two and three and four, five. And so we could certainly measure it. Now with this size actually right on it. And so I can, I can double check exactly what the width is and exact and be exact about how, how tall this is, right? Again, I can measure it off like I'm holding it. But we're not going to always be holding our objects, so we'll use a way of sighting where we're actually going to use our thumb and the end of this to then take a measurement of the width and then bring your thumb down to the bottom of that object and then measure up the height to get a feel for what the proportion is. 
So this one is almost a six to one. This one again, you always do the widest part. So this is the widest part. And again, I've got to kind of, this is, this is a little bit harder. So I'm going to try to judge this. That right there is about how wide it is. We come off the bottom. See this, so that's one, that's two, so two and a quarter. So this is two and a quarter times as tall as it is wide. If we did this little cup here, we go to the, the fattest part, which is right about there. And so again, we take this, you know, this is the width, I'd measure that, right? And then I can start at the bottom, I go, well, the first part comes three quarters of the way up the stem. And then it comes about to this a little highlight I see right there, and then I bring this up. So it's almost, uh, again, it's it's almost it's it's a, like was that two and a half I think right? So take this again. That's the width, and then the width goes into the height. One, two, you know, two and a half times, two and two thirds somewhere in there. So again, it's it's again about you know. Uh, two and a third times as tall as it is wide and you've seen people do this probably you know on um, maybe a movie or something like that where you see people have their thumb out you know and they're doing this you know while they're painting or something and that's another way of doing some very very simple some very very simple measurements so again I could check for angles you know so we're gonna use this as a measuring stick and again we're gonna measure with it by running our thumb up and down the length of it right and you're gonna look down this thing like you would sight down it like a gun I'll show you that in a, in a moment um, again if we're doing this this pair and we took this pair we're gonna find that this pair is about one and a you know one and about a, a third times as tall as it is as it is wide you know so all these things have a different proportion okay and so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to sight measure something uh, or proportional measure because we're not doing true sight measuring we're doing actual proportional measuring is the more correct term for what we are doing but that's fine if we know what this object is and what that object is and what that object is but what if we have a collection of objects how do we know how do we make this in proportion to that and that in proportion to that and the answer is is that we're going to use some uh, what we call an increment of measure and so an increment of measure is when you take one object that I can divide. You don't want it to divide into any one object more than five times. Three to five. That's, that, that's what we're looking for. If I had a little grape on here or if there were some little walnuts on here, we don't want to use that. Too small. Every time you measure, you have a little bit of error that you build into your, into your drawing. Now, if we have just a tiny bit of error, that's fine. But usually our errors are huge. And so this gets us, you know... <laughs> that sounds ominous but so we use this method to get us closer to the proportion of the things we're drawing okay so for this if I took something that said hey what do I want to be my increment measure well I could use this apple uh, this apple is smaller than the cube and this apple doesn't go into anything well doesn't does it go in this one three times one no it doesn't so we don't want to use this one we wouldn't use that we wouldn't use the pear we wouldn't use the glass we might use the, the uh, apple, but the easiest to measure is the top and bottom, this length, the height for the cube. And then I can start over and go, how, well, how many cube heights tall is this object? And this object is three and three quarters, three and three quarters of this, this cube height. So the cube height becomes our increment of measure. Let me bring this to the front of the table to make this a little easier. But I could then say, all right. Well, what's, the, the, what's that increment? And so we use this increment to measure everything. Well, I said, all right, well, what, that's, you know, we said there was however many tall. How many wide is it? And we'd say, well, let's see, there's one. You know, we could bring this back here and measure this. You know, so it's one, and, and who knows, maybe it's about a quarter. I'd have to, again, move this out of the way. And if I took, I was taking the actual measurements where I'm actually measuring this. Well, then I actually have to be touching this. I actually have to measure, measure it as precisely as possible. And it looks like it was one and a third. Again, I'd have to touch this again if, if we've done it this way, you know, so because I'm actually taking a true measurement. We're actually going to do a sighting measurement where we're not actually touching the objects. And again, that's what I'm going to show you how to do. But I would use this, this, everything would be measured against how many cube heights 
So I could even say, well, do I, how much do I see of this side? Do I see a few, uh, a full cube height? And, and to me, now you have a little different perspective. But, and, and so the round objects, we weren't going to get a ton into this, but round objects defy perspective because they're round. So no, no matter where they're at, they're going to be the same distance. This, however, does not because the camera's over here and I'm over here. We have, we have two different views. And so your view is going to be different than mine. But I could take the, um, and the distances will be different too. But I can measure how much do I see of the right side and how much do I see of the left side by using that, that height. And then I would say, well, okay, where's my height? And then how, you know, that's a cube height. How many cube heights wide is that ice wine glass? And we said, well, no, it's actually about three quarters of the way, just around three quarters. Uh, so it's less than one cube height. It's three quarters of a cube height thereabouts. And so, and then we said, well, this one was more. And if we said, well, what about the apple? And the apple would be, nope, it's about one, and you know, about one, and again, about uh, probably one and two fifths or something like that. Um, so again, we're gonna start measuring this against everything, and that becomes what we call an increment of measure, meaning that this brings everything into proportion because we measure this, and then we say, how many of those high is that? How many of those wide is that? How many, how wide is this against that? How tall is this using that? And by using the same increment to measure everything out, you have everything in some, you'll get a very accurate um, read on this, on this still life, which is what we want. So that's called proportional measuring. And again, everything has a different proportion. Uh, and to keep it again in proportion one to the other, we use one increment. In this case, it was the height from here to there. That's the height of this cube. And so that's what we're using. And we could use that to measure everything against it. And we could come up with you know, a very accurate drawing based on the height of our cube. And I actually do a quick drawing on laying out using the this method that I'm going to send you guys as well, or that's also on the YouTube site, um, however you came across it. But again, this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes. This is proportional measuring, sometimes called siding, sometimes called site size method. But site size is actually much more technical than this. It's this on steroids. And we're not going to that, we're not going to that length. Um, so you guys go ahead and try to use this. Um, use it going forward with your drawing. You'll have much more success with your drawings. Um, this has been Kevin McCain with uh, Kevin McCain Studios. I know horror classes, and you guys stay creative out there. Bye-bye now.